demos una cálida bienvenida al nuevo manager. people how you doing i hope you're having a goddamn great day today we're going to be adapting hunty flicks Bayern munich tactics to the likes of barcelona and their current side that we have right here of course there have been a lot of rumors linking potentially hunty flick making the move he is a current free agent in the managerial world potentially making a move to the catalonian side so we will have to see how things pan out but i do think that that could be a very very good appointment and I do think that his style of play, yes, it is risky. There's a lot of vertical passing and there's a lot of movements. But I think that his style of play would, for one, you know, make the Barcelona fans very happy. And two, um, suit the current side. Of course, we have seen this season that Barcelona have somewhat been exposed with the amount of space that they do tend to leave him behind. Now, that is a quick fix, in my opinion. That means that the likes of Christensen loses a spot in the team. Araujo and Kunde become the more natural centre-backs and potentially you look to either... Bring in a better right back or, you know, make a plan. Um, but otherwise, that would more or less sort the pace out in the back line. That would obviously hinder this, you know, Hunty Flick super set of tactics that I've created for you guys right here, right now. Now, along with the 4-2-3-1 system that Hunty Flick definitely used at Bayern Munich, I've also gone ahead and cr created more of the counter-pressing system, the shape that the team looks to try and revert into, to try and win that ball back nice and hard the field. We will also be talking about that. So stay tuned, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell notifications, all the good stuff. Leave a comment as well. And um, let's hop on straight into the rest of this goddamn video. So taking a look at the formation at hand, it is going to be a 4-2-3-1 system. Of course, the narrow system. I've changed the two wider attacking midfielders into left and right midfielders respectively, as well as I've pushed the two DMs slightly high up the field and made them into central midfielders. Now, this does help with the attacking fluidity, the ability to throw numbers forward, overwhelm the opposition with the sheer amount of passing in between the lines. Like I said, the vertical passing is going to be a massive element to the offensive outlet of the side. But essentially, the formation looks like this. One goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two central midfielders, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, one striker. Okay, so taking a look at the tactical vision, I've set it to wing play, which is slightly different. If you have seen the Hunty Flick Bayern Munich tactics, I think I set it to Gagan pressing. Now, more so, I do think that Gagan pressing will be a massive identity of the side, looking to win the ball back nice and hard the field, looking to keep the opposition under pressure as much as possible. But I don't think it's an element of what this current Barcelona side have to offer. They will still look to aggressively press. We've, we've created the secondary formation for that. But I think more so the tactical vision that I think would suit this side would be wing play. Looking to start a lot of their attacks out wide, link up very effectively a bit more centrally, allowing them to either create cutbacks or cross the ball and trying to feed the more central areas of the field. Of course, you do have a whole host of talented midfielders. You've got Frankie de Jong, you've got Pedri, you've got Gavi. And they will obviously be a very important role in this attacking side. But more so, you want to try and stretch or stretch 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 the opposition backline as much as possible and like i say wing play it'll generate that and create a lot of space for your talented midfield to operate in in terms of the defense and the defensive style of course it's set to pressing after possession loss like i say this will be a, a fundamental element to hunty flick system but it won't be the main be all and end all of what the system has to offer at Bayern, they were very good at pressing making sure that they were well in tune with one another when one goes one drops back they were very good at that and i think it will take time for hunty flick to implement that aggressive pressing style into this somewhat aging but still youthful barcelona side so you would still expect them to aggressively press once out of possession of the ball looking to win it back nice and hype the field and obviously looking to transition into the counter attacking opportunities the team with is set to 50 hunty flick at bayern even at germany to some extent he was very much set on having the 1v1 system the man v man type system making sure that his team are picking up their specific runners at all times looking to try and overwhelm the opposition with the physicality there the pace the power of his team so more so you are looking to like i say create those 1v1 situations all over the field and therefore 50 would best suit it and of course it does help with the very aggressive pressing nature in terms of the depth it is set to 90 a very high line but again this does help with the offensive outlets it gets the the full backs into those nice wide high areas allowing them to be very involved in the offensive outlet of course this does help with the 
the counter pressing system as well to some extent allowing you to you know create those waves of attacking pressure um just chucking the ball at the opposition and if they do tend to try and clear it very aggressively hard the field your center backs are in the correct positions to obviously win the ball back and then look to circulate it back into play you will be playing a possession based brand of football but not exactly the type that most barcelona fans as well as most fans in general would think. In terms of the offense, the builder players set to a balanced approach, allowing the, the team at hand to keep the shape, keep the structure of the formation um, to its best, you know, shape and structure, but more so it can incorporate other various aspects of it. Now, it won't necessarily always be building out from the back. Of course, Hansi Flick likes to do that, so you will see it. But at the same time, if you need to, you know, go long, you can definitely look to do so. You have the likes of a Frankie de Jong, you have the likes of um, a, an Araujo, a, a Pedri, who can look to try and spray those balls on. More so, they, they do like to try and keep it within the five-yard passes, the quick move, pass and move type game. But at the same time, if your runners are making those runs, penetrating the offensive of the opposition's back line in behind them, you, you need to try and supply them with a potential ball. And like I said earlier, Hunty Flick's system is built on a vertical passing, looking to go long, looking to try and exploit the back line with the amount of people making those runs in behind. And then, of course, at the same time, you can look to build up very fast, have your wing backs over overlapping, allow for runners to get forward into the box, into the, those attacking areas. So you are looking to try and incorporate a whole host of different aspects to your offensive outlets. In terms of the chance creation, I have set it to forward runs. Now, this does encourage your, your double pivots, your two central midfielders to get nice and high up the field. Very intrinsic in the offensive outlets, allowing them to always be involved in that extra pass when required. And it also allows you to somewhat maintain possession um, in those higher, more attacking areas of the field, more so where the opposition try and overload you with players. Well, on this occasion, you'll have more numbers in your in your favor that can help with an extra pass, a potential you know pass leading to goal and whatnot. But more so, you can look to try and overload the opposition in their half. As for the width, it is set to ninety, looking to try and stretch the opposition's backline, trying to generate as much you know space between the lines for your Gavis, your Pedris, your Frankie De Jongs, of course, the likes of. Um, of Robert Lewandowski and of course with the vertical passing if you have multiple attacking threats out wide it does tend to you know create quite a few issues more centrally as for the likes of the players in the box I have set it to eight more so allowing for Lewandowski to be surrounded with other attacking options so he's not the main focus of the, the intended cross into the box but at the same time it can allow for potentially one of your fullbacks or maybe even one of the central midfielders to break into that attacking area as for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. Okay, so moving on to the instructions at hand, we've got the likes of Tostegan. Now, it goes without saying he is going to be a sweeper keeper and come for crosses. He's one of the best at doing so, making sure he's alleviating the stress and the pressure on the back line as best as he possibly can. The saving outside of the box, you are playing a very high line. You need a very good proactive goalkeeper, and of course, Tostegan is that. He needs to be able to read the game, know when to run out of his box, claim the ball back and circulate it back into play, and he'll do a very effective job with it. As for your two center backs, of course, they are set to their base instructions. There's no major changes required to it. Um, and of course, because you are playing a high line, you need to have some good recovery pace. And I don't think Christensen is that well rated when it comes to that. So that's why I would suggest Araujo and Kunde, you know, taking up the more central center back roles and maybe looking to either bring in a, a, a right back or make a plan in that right back department that would help benefit and suit the side. We do have a few options that you can look to, to potentially sign that for one would suit the Barcelona style of play as well as suits a Hansi Flick type system, but we will get there much later. Speaking of which, the right back, Kunde, he's got a slightly differing role to what Balde has. So for the attack runs, he is set to balance. So yes, he can look to get high and wide, but more so sometimes he can look to stay back and solidify that right back department. In terms of the run type, it is set to overlap. More so with the Hansi Flick system, we saw it at Bayern Munich, the right and the left back would look to try and hug the touch lines and look to patrol up and down the left or the right hand side, looking to try and create a lot of the width down either flank. Finally, as for the likes of the defensive positioning, it is set to step up. Now this does help with the counter pressing system. I saw countless times in multiple clips and even when I watched Bayern Munich under Flick, the, the fullbacks got nice and high, nice and wide, as well as nice and close to the opposition, whether it was the winger or one of their wider players, looking to very aggressively press them when they did find position high up the field, looking to either create a turnover or a mismatch or something of that sort that would result in Bayern Munich winning the ball back. And more so, you are looking to try and replicate that role for each fullback 
in this Barcelona side. As you'll see here for the likes of Balde, slightly or a slight tweak to his instructions. He's set to join the attack, looking to be a bit more of the attacking fullback of the two, bombing down the left-hand side as much as possible. The run type is still set to overlap with the defensive positioning still set to step up. Into your midfield double pivot, of course, you've got the likes of Pedri and Frankie de Jong. Um, now, I will also say this, with Bayern Munich, a, a massive similarity to what Bayern Munich did that helped them win the treble, and this side right here is, if you look at that midfield three, Gavi, Pedri, and Frankie de Jong, there's no dedicated ball-winning midfielder, there's no Casemiro, there's no Rodri. Frankie de Jong and Pedri are not, you know, the, the best suited to being aggressive and winning the ball back. But at the same time, Hansi Flick managed to get it to work at Bayern Munich, so I would assume he would look to do the same, having a, a very good ball-playing orientated midfield that they would all try and cover for one another, whether it's Frankie de Jong helping back, whether it's Pedri or Gavi, you know, putting in a, a crunching tackle, winning the ball back, as well as the likes of Balde and Kunde, your fullbacks will be very um, important to winning the ball back in those central areas in certain moments, using their pace to your advantage. So. That, that's one thing I will say before we talk about the, the rest of the instructions. You can somewhat be exposed with um, no crunching tackler in the side. Okay, so enough waffling. We're talking about Pedri now and his role going forward. The attacking support, I've set it to balanced, allowing him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, link up very effectively with the builder play um, with Frankie de Jong, you know, looking to try and progress it forward. Or potentially, if you are looking to try and create overloads high up the field, he can look to get nice and high, link up very effectively with Gavi, and look to be a, an offensive nuisance. In terms of the offensive nuisance, you want the support on crosses to be also be set to balance, allowing him to sometimes break into the box, other times hang on the edge of the area and try and facilitate and rotate possession. The interceptions is set to normal, with the defensive positioning set to cover the center, looking to manually drag your two DMs, or your two central midfielders, into those wider channels if required, of course, if your fullbacks are out of position. In terms of the, pos the positioning freedom for Pedri, now it's a bit of a sticky one. I've tried multiple games of having him on drift wide or, you know, free roam or potentially stick to position. Now, I think for me personally, stick to position benefits the side a lot more. Frankie de Jong and Gavi are both set to free roam. And if you have all three of your midfielders on free roam, it tends to leave quite a few gaps and holes in, your, in your, the middle of the park, allowing for the opposition to try and exploit you especially if you, they, they do turn the ball over and it can lead to a whole host of different things. So I do think that the best way to get the best out of Pedri would be allowing him to express himself in this left-hand channel as much as possible. So allowing him to stick to position um, as that you know, left-hand side number six slash eight. As for the likes of Frankie de Jong, now I've modeled his game after what Kimmich does. I think de Jong and Kimmich have very like-for-like -like type attributes. Of course, Frankie de Jong might be better at some things and Kimmich might be better at others. But in terms of the role for De Jong, it's going to be modeled after the likes of Joshua Kimmich. So stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box for the crosses, looking to try and facilitate and rotate play. But every now and then you do tend to see him breaking into that attacking third. But it's 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 quite nice. It does it's it's a nice balanced approach without it being set to balanced. The interceptions are set to aggressive, allowing for a nice bite in the midfield. You are looking for some aggression out of your midfield pivot, and that is going to be Frankie de Jong. And I've also selected Frankie because he does have quite a high stamina, so you can allow for him to be a bit more of a, a dogged DM slash CM in that midfield area. As for the defensive positioning, it's set to cover the center, as well as the positioning freedom set to free room. Now, Joshua Kemek used to drop between the defenders, collect the ball off of the goalkeeper or the center backs, and look to try and progress it forward. You are looking for Frankie de Jong to do a very similar role. Drop between the defenders, pop up in little half spaces at, at a deeper, more defensive rate, collect the ball, and then look to facilitate and rotate uh, the play into the midfield areas or potentially into the front line. Okay, so moving on to Gavi in the number 10 role. I think that this could be a role that Hansi Flick and Gavi, you know, unlock something in both the manager and the player as well as the system. I think Gavi in the Thomas Muller role, I think he's a slightly better player than Thomas Muller. He's got a higher potential, obviously. But I think he can do the, the job a bit better with his dribbling abilities, his ability to drop deep, link up very nicely with Pedri and De Jong. It can offer another element and style of play to the side. So the defensive support is here to basic, like I said, allowing him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, but other times hanging slightly higher up the field. Now, one thing I will say with that Bayern Munich side, Thomas Muller and Lewandowski would interchange positions every now and then. At one moment, you'd see Thomas Muller higher up than Lewandowski and others, it would be the other way around. You are looking to more or less try and replicate that type and that style of, of, of system. So the supports on crosses, I've told the number 10 to break into the box as much as possible. And with the roles of Lewandowski and, and so on, you'll see that he tends to drop off 
open up space for the number 10 to naturally do this. The positioning freedom is here to free roam, allowing him to add a you know slightly higher um, level in the field, pop up in a little half spaces, pull players out of position, be an offensive nuisance to the opposition side, and also just be very creative with his offensive outlets. But in terms of the interceptions, because of the counter-pressing system that you are trying to implement with this side, and because obviously Gavi has stamina to burn, I've set it to aggressive, and this does help with trying to win the ball back nice and high field. Onto your left and right midfielders. Now, both of them have the same roles. Basic defensive supports, sometimes dropping deeper, other times hanging up the field, allowing them to be an outlet for a potential counter. In terms of the width or the chance creation, it's set to a balanced width, allowing them to sometimes hug the touchlines, especially on the, the right-hand side. But other times, they can look to cut inside. And this does go hand in hand with the overlapping fullback role. Now, with the, the right hand side, Rafina will look to try and hug the touch on a bit more. But if the likes of Kunde does progress higher up the field, he can look to more or less invert and be an inside forward. In terms of the support runs, it's set to balance as well, looking for them to use a whole aspect and different dynamic to their game plan, whether it's breaking in behind, coming a bit shorter, being a bit more of a target man, linking up very effectively in those wider channels, they can tend to do to they can tend to do this. God damn it. They can tend to do this very effectively. As for the interceptions, I've set it to aggressive. Again, the counter press that you're trying to implement, as well as the support on crosses is set to balance, allowing them to sometimes break into the box, other times trying to create for the attackers. As you'll see here for the likes of Rafina, he's set to basic, balanced, balanced aggressive and then of course balanced again finally onto the likes of roberto lewandowski he is here to stay central now more so with lewandowski in the Bayern by munich role he would tend to drift very effectively you know throughout the back line and sometimes stay central so obviously he's a bit older but i do think that hansi flick could potentially unlock a, a, a new element a new level to what lewandowski can do with this side but i would assume because obviously the age is slightly higher um he would look to try and stay a bit more central still looking to sometimes drift but more so stay central and be in that attacking area for the support and the balls into the box and whatnot but in terms of the attacking runs i've set it to mix allowing him to incorporate different variations to his game whether it's playing as a false nine dropping a bit deeper allowing for gavi to take up that striker role maybe even being a target man of course this team is not you know blessed with you know physical players up front you've got Torres, Gavi and Rafina who are all you know six foot or under. Lewandowski is the the only real physical player in that front line so you might require him to be a bit more of a target man more often backing into the opposition linking up play very effectively or sometimes he can look to make those runs in behind and that's more or less what the mix attack does get out of your strikers when you do tend to set it on um, for them so you are trying to incorporate all these different various aspects to what Lewandowski and Barcelona are trying to do in that offensive area. The interceptions are set to normal with the defensive support being set to come back on defense. Now, again, this does help with the interchangeability of Gavi and Lewandowski, and it also tends to pull players out of position. So, onto the defensive structure. Now, it's essentially a defensive structure, but it's not really a, a, a structure that they would look to try and defend in. You'll see now when I explain the tactics and whatnot, but more so they look to try and revert into this pushing Gavi slightly higher up the field, allowing him to press as a front two, press the opposition back line as well as the goalkeeper, forcing errors, forcing mistakes high up the field, and looking to try and counter-attack and turn those opportunities into goal-scoring threats. So for the formation at hand, it is going to be a 4-4-2 holding. There's no real changes I've made to it. So therefore, it will be one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, two DMs, two wider midfielders, and of course, two strikers. Now, moving on to the tactics. The tactical vision is still set to wing play. No major changes to that. Especially if you are looking to try and, you know, counter-attack as much as possible. You want your wingers um, to start a lot of attacks out wide and try and stretch the opposition back line as thin as possible. In terms of the defensive style, it's still set to pressing off to position loss, with the team width still being set to 50. You're still trying to have that man-v-man -man type situation throughout the entirety of the field. But we do see here the first real change is the depth set to 65. Now, it's, you know, it's a mid block. That's not the, the highest of lines when it was set to 90, but it's now set to a mid block, a bit more compact at the back, allowing for not as many through balls to be, you know, to try and exploit your, your back line. But more so, it's not the, the, the deepest of mid blocks and it is still going to be a nice progressive line. So therefore, if you do turn the ball over, you don't have that much distance, distance to try and cover when trying to attack the opposition goal. As for the offense and the builder play, it's set to fast build up. Of course, you are looking to try and, you know, trigger quite a few runs in behind and essentially trying to exploit the opposition's back line. 
with the transgression also being set to direct passing. Now this will encourage the forwards to make those piercing runs into the back line, into that open space, exploit them as much as possible and look to try and score you your goals. As for the width, it's set to a more narrow but still slightly wider 60 of course. With a, a, a defensive type system, you are trying to compact yourself as much as possible whether that's going forward or backwards. But again, because it's wing play, you would still require some width to your offensive outlets and therefore 60 is the lowest you can go. But at the same time, it still helps you in terms of the offensive outlets. As for the players in the box, a more conservative, but set to five or two to three players in and around that attacking area. Um, you're not looking to try and overcommit too many players. As for the corners and the free kicks, it's still set to four. Okay, so taking a look at the instructions, to Stegen, he's got the same role. Now, I have said in the past, because teams play, you know, a, a mid block, I, I would say, you know, set the goalkeeper to balance, but it's, it's, a, it's at the higher end of a mid block, so you would still require him to, you know, be proactive and reactive and occasionally make that run outside of his area and try and claim the ball back. So again, no major changes to the goalkeeper, as well as no major changes to your back two. As for the right back, Kunde, he is still going to have the overlapping approach as well as the step up, but the attacking runs are set to stay back while attacking. Now, every now and then he can look to progress forward, especially with the fast build up. It will, it will encourage your fullbacks to get high and wide, um, but it, more so his, his main role and his main duty will be cover the right back area, make sure he's not being exploited with any runs in behind him. And if the opportunity is there, he will look to progress and get forward in terms of the attacking outlets. As for the likes of Balde, Again, same rule, overlap as well as step up, but the attacking runs slightly more honed in this time. It's set to a balanced approach, allowing him to, yes, attack when required, but other times have a bit more of a balanced, more calculated approach to when he attacks and when he stays back. Okay, so onto your double pivot, of course, De Jong and Pedri. Um, both of them have the same roles. So for both of them, balanced defense, looking to try and keep the shape in the central areas of the field, looking to try and create and generate that shield in front of the back line. Stay back while attacking is going to be a thing. You don't really want them stepping out or being too aggressive, getting too high at the field and potentially being exploited. The interceptions is set to normal with the positioning freedom of both of them being set to deep line playmaker, allowing them to get on the ball quite nicely, nice and early and either looking to lay off those five yard passes and work the ball up the field or potentially if there is a runner in behind, looking to try and hit them in transition. As for the defensive positioning for both, again, it is set to cover the center. As you'll see, for the likes of Frankie de Jong, he's got the same role and instructions as well. Onto the likes of your left and right midfielders, again, same roles for both. They will both be told to come back on defense, looking to try and help out as much as possible. And of course, you are looking to try and win the ball back, so they will be very aggressive when doing so. The chance creation is set to a balanced width now. More so, they will look to try and hang wide, and this is where the 60 width does come into play, because you won't always have your fullbacks overlapping and creating those nice overlapping situations. Um, so you would require them to try and generate as much space down the left and the right-hand channels. The support runs is said to get in behind you. You are trying to use their, their speed to your advantage, looking to try and penetrate the opposition backline with their runs in behind. And of course, if Pedri or De Jong have the ball in their possession, they'll look to try and hit those wider players in transition for the attacking runs. Finally, the interceptions are set to aggressive with the support on crosses being set to get into the box. As you'll see here for the likes of Torres, he has got the same role and instructions as well. Okay, so finally onto Gavi and Lewandowski. There, there are a few tweaks to the, the two, but more so, both of them will be set to a balanced width, allowing them to sometimes drift wider, other times stay a bit more central. Both of them as well, their attacking outlets, their attacking runs will also be set to mixed, allowing them to try and generate the most up front. Of course, you aren't committing too many men forward, so you need a lot of creativity in that front line. So whether it's, you know, being a bit more physical, holding up the play, linking up very effectively with the few offensive players up front, or potentially dropping a bit deeper, getting on the ball, and then looking to progress it forward, they can tend to do so, or maybe even making those runs in behind themselves. The interceptions is set to aggressive, looking to try and press the opposition back line and goalkeeper, forcing errors, forcing mistakes as best as that front line possibly can. And then finally, for the likes of Gavi, this is where things change ever so slightly, he is always expected to come back, drop back, um, and help support the defense, whereas the likes of Lewandowski, as you can see, uh, he's got the same role, except for the defensive support. Every now and then, he does tend to hang slightly high up the field, using his physicality to his advantage and linking up very effectively in terms of the transition plays. Other times, he can look to drop a bit deeper with Gavi and help support the defense. Okay, so I have gone ahead and shortlisted a few players that I think would suit Hunty Flick's system, as well as you know, a few players that Barcelona could desperately use. So I've gone for the right back area, 
put down four or five right backs that I think could definitely help this side. And I will also say this, little disclaimer, if you're trying to follow a realistic career mode, ignore a few of these names. Of course, Masrawi would cost an arm and a leg, and I don't think Barcelona have 50 or 60 million to drop on a right back. Um, but maybe players like Benjamin Hendricks, who you could potentially pick up for around 25 to 30 million. Pablo Mafueo, 30 million or so, as well as Correa. Um, and one thing that you will note with a lot of these players, maybe not Masrawi, but a lot of these players, they have loads of pace. And you are looking for quite a bit of pace in your back line as much as possible, to be honest. Um, as you can see, a Correa would definitely suit the system the best in terms of his recovery pace, his badges, his play styles, overlapping fullback on that right hand channel would be absolute hand in glove type fits for this Barcelona system. And if you're looking for a more cheaper option, Mingueze, a former Barcelona player, I think they sold him to uh, Celta Vigo two seasons ago, but he can play in a whole host of various positions, right back, right midfielder, as well as sense back. So if you are looking for a cheaper pos or cheaper option, a more realistic option, if you ask me, I think he could be a potential signing that you could make. As for the sense backs, I've gone ahead and put down three sense backs. More so, Karenka as well as uh, Lacroix, They've got quite a bit of pace, so again, that does fit the recovery pace system. Um, I've put down Karenka. I don't think he's overly fast, but I think he's decent, but mainly because he is a left-footed player. Now, it wasn't a massive must for Bayern Munich, but Hansi Flick does you know, appreciate the ability for a left and a right-footed centre-back in each position. So they have Martinez at the moment, Barcelona, and they would probably require one more, especially if you do sell the likes of Christensen. And then finally, Chust, he's a good ball playing centre back, and I do think that he could potentially suit the system, although his pace is very questionable at times. As for the left back area, if you, the likes of Marcus Alonso does leave, three really good left backs that you could potentially sign. Luca Netz from the German league, young, does have a very bright future ahead of him as an attacking fullback. Um, Juan Miranda, of course, he is Spanish. He is in the final 12 months of his deal in real life. And I do think that it's something and it's a potential deal that Barcelona do look to try and exploit, pick him up on a free. So maybe looking to sign him could be a really good go. And of course, I've gone for a slightly more experienced Iago. Now, of course, all of these players will be competing with the likes of Balde for that left-hand side. So make sure that, you know, you bring in a decent amount of, of players for various positions. Because with the system, you are going to, you know, drain quite a bit of stamina. Into the midfield, we've gone for a few DMs, five to be exact, sorry, four to be exact. We've gone for Kimmich, Andrich, um, Rodriguez, and Beltran. Now, Beltran is more of the, the silky smooth, free-flowing DM that can also play as a central midfielder. Of course, his badges are, you know, long pass, tiki tucker, and intercept, which would definitely suit what Hansi Flick and Barcelona fans and how they would expect to play. Um, but in terms of the, the bites in the midfield, Andrich and Rodriguez definitely do tend to add this, you know, flavor and elements to that midfield area. But now I've also put down Joshua Kimmich because obviously if you're living under a rock, you probably wouldn't know, but Kimmich is linked with a move away from Bayern Munich. And of course, Barcelona are in financial issues at the moment, looking to potentially offload some of their big money players, aka Frankie de Jong. So if you sell Frankie de Jong as a more realistic option, I think bringing in Kimmich for a much lesser fee would go a long way in creating that realism factor, as well as it would also, you know, solidify that midfield area. Of course, Kimmich has played for Flick before, and I think he would help, you know, transition this Barcelona side into the more Flick type system. So it could be an option for you. Of course, he is slightly older, so it's 28, 87 overall though, and he's got some really good playing um, styles. So it's, it's an option, it's a thought, if you do want to get rid of Frankie de Jong. Um, as for the likes of Jan Kuta, of course, linked with every club under the sun, potentially just going to go back to Man City and be an absolute beast there. But if you are looking for another pacey option as that right back slash right midfielder, Jan Kuta is a very solid option. And then I've gone for a few midfielders here that can play in various different positions, whether that's a DM, whether that's a right midfielder, left midfielder. I've gone for these players because I do think that they are potential signings that Barcelona could look to try and exploit. I mean, Hidara you can pick up for around 15 to 20 million, a very good, cheap option, as, lo as well as uh, Neuhaus, a very talented youngster that hasn't really fulfilled his talent, but I do think that Flick will be looking to try and bring in something special from Germany. He is very much in tune with what the, the German league and everything has to offer because, of course, he was the German manager. He managed Bayern Munich there for two years, so he should know more or less what's cracking there, and that's also one of the reasons why I have so many German players and players from the German league in this on this list. 
Um, but yes, I do think that the midfield area is quite light. So you've got Gundogan, Frankie de Jong, um, Gavi, as well as Pedri. And then it gets a bit light, it gets a bit worrying. You've got a few other good youngsters, but you need more experience. You need a, a few more professionals in and around the dressing room. So again, it goes back to the realistic factor. But I think any of these players really, um, they're all cheap in terms of you're not going to blow 80 or 90 million pounds or euros on them. 30 to 40 million, you can easily pick all of them up. Um, for around that price um, and then of course we've got Bayerna here he can play as a left midfielder central midfielder as well as a striker now I think he is going to get a move to potentially Real Madrid but if that move does fall through he could be making his way to Barcelona I know Barcelona and Real Madrid have been linked with the young star um, and he could offer a nice you know different elements to your attacking outlets so there you have it guys that is how I would adapt Hunty Flick system to the likes of Barcelona of course linked with the job in real life it could happen it might not who knows but if you guys have enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below subscribe if you are new and you like content like this um, I'm not going to rate it I don't tend to rate videos like this because it's a what if scenario I tend to rate the more realistic tactics that I do tend to make so if you would like to find out what the rating for Hansi Flick system is um, go and check out the Bayern Munich uh, system it's a very similar system with a few adaptations to it um, but yes anyways guys until the next time I hope you have a damn great day I'm out